I'd like to welcome everybody to our virtual open house. Uh, my name is Dan Clifford. I'm the principal at Ellsworth High School. Um, usually in a typical year, uh, traditional year, uh, this is one of the, our favorite nights and one that we really prepare for, uh, where all the classrooms are open and there's a lot going on in our gym. And um, we give tours of the building and you have different meetings with different teachers and you get to meet our kids and things like that. But um, we thought this would be the, the second best thing. Um, we have our freshman team with us. Um, and then we have teachers from all other departments, uh, just to give you some information about what Ellsworth High School is like. And, um, you know, a lot of things that we have, we have to offer. Um, in the Q&A, that is where you can type in any questions that you have. And at the end of this presentation, uh, we'll answer any of your questions. Um, we have a slideshow and uh, each teacher is going to talk about the different department that they're in. Um, and so I'm going to share my screen right now and we'll get started with that. So that's a picture of the outside of our building. Believe it or not, this is the 25th year um, we've been in this building. And uh, it's, a, it's a gorgeous building outside and in. Our custodians do an incredible job every single day of uh, keeping it neat and clean. And it's, we're very fortunate to have it. Um, we have big classroom space. Our science labs are huge. Um, our auditorium is um, one of the best in Eastern Maine. And uh, we're really, really fortunate to, to be working here and uh, have our kids go to school here. Some quick facts about Ellsworth High School. We have about 500 students. Uh, we have 50 minute classes, seven periods a day. You graduate when, you have, when you've earned 24 credits. You need 40 community service hours to graduate. We tell our students to concentrate on just doing 10 hours a, a year. We have 14 concurrent enrollment classes and our guidance department is gonna talk about that a little later on. It's a program that we're very proud of and uh, a very popular program. We are rich in academics, athletics and VPA tradition and always have. We have plenty of clubs. We have clubs for anyone. And uh, anybody that wants to um, start a club, it's very easy to do. And um, we start different clubs every single year. We're a class B school. That's what we participate in um, with uh, performances and athletics. Uh, every student receives a Lenovo laptop the first day of school that they, that they um, enter at Ellsworth High School. And I'll talk a little bit about our freshman academy. Um, we've had freshman academy for a long time and it really helps to transition from eighth graders into our high school. And it's, it's been a, a terrific program, a savior for a lot of our students and our families. And so how, it, how it's set up is, let's say that we're gonna have 120 students in our freshman class next year. Uh, we randomly pick 60 are on Team Lightning and 60 are, are on Team Thunder. And we just even out the teams. Um, and like I said, it's random. And um, so they're put on one team or the other. And all that means is, is if you're on a team, then you have the same four core teachers. So those 60 kids have the same four core teachers. But what it does uh, for us is it splits the, the group in half and um, our teachers meet four days a week. And it is to talk about each child and how they're doing. So from really the second week of school until the last day of school, um, the student or the teachers talk about you. They get to know your child, um, how they're doing academically, socially, um, the, how the transition is going. And uh, we get to know our students very, very well. And um, it's because of the Freshman Academy setup that we have. And it's very important to us. And it's been extremely successful. And uh, we do a very good job of uh, keeping track of our freshmen. You're going to see different slides um, throughout, and it's just going to be some of our teachers, some of our um, students, and some of our hallways, so you can see what the inside of Ellsworth High School. We're going to go to the English department first with Mrs. Bailey and Mrs. Magruder. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Stephanie Magruder. I'm the Teen Thunder English teacher. Um, I don't have much of a voice tonight. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to try my best. But the English department's been working really hard the past few years to work together and make the English classes as valuable and as interesting as possible. We work closely um, amongst all of our grade levels to ensure that we cover all the state standards that we need to cover and that you get graded on. But our big goal was just to make it interesting and valuable to you guys. So you feel like you're really learning and you're gonna be prepared once you graduate. So we teach you things like resumes and application letters, how to write papers so you feel confident about it. Um, we've spent a lot of time researching the most effective ways to teach English. And one of those ways is to give you guys choices about what you read as often as we can. Because if we aren't interested in something, then we don't want to do it, right? We adults included. Um, so we've spent more money than Mr. Clifford probably appreciates buying as many books as we can for each of our classrooms to give the students as many choices as we can. Um, we also work closely with our librarian, Ms. Hessler, who is the best in the state of Maine. Um, she's awesome about talking with students and ordering books that they want. And she has just transformed the library the last couple of years into just a really cool place to be. Um, so during freshman English, another thing that we try to stick to is the theme of coming of age. And we read books that <clears throat> talk about issues that are affecting teenagers um, right now and what it looks like into the real world once you graduate. So we read about teenagers who are just like you and we discuss how they're handling some of the same problems that you might be having. We focus a lot on reading and writing skills. So can you understand what you read? We know a lot of kids don't like to read and we get that. Um, so we try our hardest to help you get through that if you're one of those kiddos. Um, we focus a lot about on how to write essays. So how do we write to inform people? How do we write to persuade people? So we try and teach you how to be really good at arguing. Um, and we try and teach you guys how to research online to find credible information kind of beyond Facebook. So that's a big goal of ours is just to um, prepare you for that. So the cool thing is after freshman year, um, even though freshman year is the best, but after freshman year, there are a lot more options you can take for English classes. So Ms. Bailey's gonna talk more about that. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Lindsay Bailey. I'm the English teacher for Team Lightning. And what you see on the screen for Mr. Clifford's slideshow is a really quick and expansive list of our courses that we offer. So if we start up at the top left, College Prep and Honors English are offered nine through 12. Uh, with freshmen and sophomores, those are your choices. As we get to junior year, that's where AP Literature and Language and Composition and the Bridge con Concurrent Enrollment classes come in. And then senior year, uh, you also have AP Literature and Language, and then you have the Bridge courses. But we've split uh, senior English into two semester courses so that you can take courses that are, might be more in line with your interests. So if you look at that list under the concurrent enrollment courses, we have speculative fi fiction, uh, literature and film, sports literature, the power of mythology and storytelling, poetry from Bob Dylan, oh, excuse me, the other way around, Dylan Thomas to Bob Dylan, travel and adventure literature, short story, poetry writing, advanced creative writing, outdoor environmental literature, zero to 60 writing your first novel and SAT prep. So we've covered a wide range of options that we want you as students to have so that you can explore different things and really develop uh, the different interests that you have, even if they might not be something that you're ready to commit to for college. It's just a moment to either write or read something that might be a little bit different or just sounds a little more interesting to you. So Mr. Clifford, I'll pass this back to you and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. So this slide, so one of the, one of the traditions that we have is the very first day of school, um, grades nine through 11 go into the gymnasium and they sit in their sections. And then we have the seniors come in to a standing ovation and um, that's the faculty and staff that is lined up for them and um, so they parade around the parade around the um, gymnasium 
until they sit in their section and it kind of starts the first day of school in a cool way. And I know seniors really look forward to being a part of that. Um, we obviously couldn't do it this year, but in a typical year we will, um, but it's just a fun tradition we have here at Ellsworth High School. And for math, we have Mrs. Billings and Mr. Ratton. I can start it off. Hi there, I'm Silas Ratton. I'm the ninth grade teacher for Teen Thunder. And I guess I'll, I'll be pretty brief, uh, a fraction of the time uh, that the English department took, and that is a math joke. Uh, <laughs> class offerings include pre-algebra, algebra, honors geometry, and in some cases, we do have ninth graders take honors algebra too. However, that's fairly rare. Uh, placement, as far as that goes, that is from the eighth grade, um, the teachers from the sending schools in eighth grade. And although they're, they're pretty good at it, we do have flexibility to move students vertically um, if it, it fits their skill set, their comfort level, or we just feel that uh, they'll find more success in a, in a different course. Um, all, the, all the classes in the math department sort of run the same way where we have a, a transparent set of standards. And that really serves as the roadmap for, for how the course goes. And we like to think that both students and uh, the parents have a really good idea of what their student is learning at any given time. And like I said, I'll be brief. So the, the only other thing that I would mention is that students need to take three years of math credit and that will typically get them up to Algebra 2. I'll send it off to Mrs. Billings. Thank you, Mr. Ratton. I'm Leslie Billings. I'm the um, Team Lightning math teacher often confused with Lindsay Bailey because we're both those LB names and we're right across from each other. Um, and uh, I just wanna talk a little bit about, um, I, I understand from guidance talking to parents of incoming students that there's some concern about being behind or not being ready or uh, just because this has been such an odd year for everybody. And I want to reassure everybody that Mr. Ratner and I both understand that, that that's a concern and that we will take things slowly and adjust if we need to. And if there's something that somebody isn't understanding, we'll take the time to make sure that they become solid on that concept. And that by the end of the year, they will be ready for whatever the next math class is for them. So please don't be concerned. It's, it's a universal problem. It's not specific to any one student. Um, and we'll just make sure you guys are ready for where you need to be. Um, in general, um, we offer, Mr. Ratton and I both offer, besides the focused learning tags, we offer time after school. We're both willing to stay after school with students or meet before school, students, before school with students. Um, we're both early, early um, risers and get to school early, so we do have that time. Um, we use Google Classroom um, for all of our work, so all of, all of your assignments will be posted in Google Classroom, and parents can have access to that so they can keep track of it. Uh, the textbook for algebra and for geometry is available online. Sadly, the pre-algebra textbook is not available online, but we don't really follow it that closely anyway, so it's just kind of a guideline. Um, we use a lot of resources. Um, Desmos is an online graphing calculator that has some really fun activities associated with it. Uh, we do make sure kids know how to use the TI-84 calculator because that's the one that's allowed for SATs. Um, we have 3D printers available to the math department. Uh, this year has been kind of tough for group work, but we're hoping next year to kind of get back into that. I know we both missed it. Um, there will be projects throughout the year, so it's not all just crunching numbers. You get to do some fun things in math. Math can be fun, yes, it really can. Um, I also wanna mention the math team. Um, the math team is available and open to any student who wants to. There's no criteria to join. You don't have to test into it. It's just an opportunity to have fun. There are five meets um, regionally and then one state meet in the springtime. Um, it's a good way to add to your high school resume, so to speak, um, and have a little bit of fun with, it's kind of low pressure and low key. Uh, it's tough for freshmen usually just because they haven't had the upper level math classes yet, but we still welcome freshmen and, and just, 
uh, take that as an opportunity to get used to it and get an idea of how it goes. So there's my plug for math team. And uh, if there's any questions, please, please put them in the chat and I will pass it back to Mr. Clifford. Thank you. So this is our lob lobby um, through the front entrance. And so as you come in, you'll see this directly in front of you. Uh, to the right is our guidance department and to the right also is our main office. And for science, Mr. McKechnie. Are you muted? Yeah, Dan, why don't you just go ahead and talk a little about science? Okay. So our science department, so as a freshman, um, it's physical science and you can have a choice between physical science and honors physical science. And then um, after that, you have your environmental biology, molecular uh, chemistry, environmental chemistry, honors chemistry, honors bio, AP bio, Honors Environmental Science, AP Environmental Science, which you could take uh, your sophomore year. So your that would be your first AP course you would take your sophomore year. Uh, physics, Honors Physics and Calculus, Honors Anatomy and Physiology, Bridge Concurrent Enrollment Human Biology, Bridge Chemistry, Bridge Physics, uh, Honors Biotechnology, Natural Disasters, Ecology, Practical Chemistry, Engineering Technology, engineering and design. And like I said before, probably our, our science rooms are, um, you know, probably our nicest rooms in the school just because they're so big. Um, there's a classroom area for everybody. And then in the back of the classrooms, they have lab tables and lab areas. And uh, our science department does a terrific job of anybody that wants to go into the, to any uh, medical or engineering um, or anything like that. And, uh, you know, they, we have terrific teachers and um, any pathway that you want for a science, they will sit down with you and they will create a pathway along with guidance uh, for your four years. And um, it's an incredible department and uh, they do a really good job. This is our library. And that is the picture that you saw through the, um, opening doors of the lobby that is kind of towards the end of the lobby area to the right hand side right before the elevators is our library. And social studies department Mr Gunn and Mr Melvin. Thank you Mr Clifford my name is Joseph Gunn I am the <clears throat> excuse me social studies teacher for Team Thunder here at Ellsworth High School and I want to thank you all for joining us tonight for our virtual eighth grade open house. Um, I'd like to give you an overview of what uh, students will be studying in ninth grade. And that is a course called civics, excuse me, government, civics and geography. Uh, I'm gonna go over the government and civics portion of the course and then hand you off to my colleague, Mr. Malbaum, who will talk about the geography part of the course. In the government and civics part of the course, uh, the core curriculum that we study uh, starts in September and ends um, usually around February break. Uh, we study the nature of power or power comes from and originates in government. We study where American democracy originates from. Uh, we study intensively the US Constitution and learn to interpret what that means. Bill of Rights, other rights amendments, um, political parties, interest groups, their function in American democracy, voting in elections, uh, how citizens can make a difference in democracy, uh, the three branches of government and how they function. And that typically leads us up, like I said, to around February break where we make a big change in the course uh, to geography for the remainder of the year. And I'll turn that over to my colleague on Team Lightning, Mr. Malbon. Thank you, Mr. Gunn. Welcome everybody. My name's uh, Jason Malbon. I am the civics teacher for Team Lightning. And as my colleague said, uh, we do 
have quite a uh, dramatic changeover in uh, subject matter after February break. Uh, we shift gears quite a bit to some new standards, um, graduating standards for social studies, and it is geography. So, so what that means is, you know, we're learning about basic map skills. You know, we bring back uh, map skills such as, you know, how to how to read charts and graphs and and maps and uh, that latitude and longitude and distance and scale and some of the basic map skills. Uh, but, you know, we move on to broader topics such as globalization and, you know, studying populations around the world. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of push for the idea of global, being a global citizen, you know, in the, in the fall and up until February, you know, we do talk a lot about citizenship um, as an American citizen, but we also want our graduates to be global citizens. So that means, you know, we want them to know some places of the world and, and be able to identify and understand different regions of the world. Uh, so we, you know, part of that is bringing back the old fashioned map quiz, you know, that's uh, important to, uh, for them to do that. And um, usually that takes us around uh, April and May and, you know, a lot of times we have time to touch upon some economic concepts. You know, we, we teach them about the idea of scarcity and, and uh, supply and demand and why that's significant and different forms of money. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a really nice changeover from, from civics and government to the spring uh, topics uh, and the kids really uh, respond really well to it. So their freshman year, they get a really a broad array of different skills and uh, the things that we study uh, to end the year. And, you know, I'll draw your attention to the slide there. We do uh, have a lot of great electives, as you can see. Uh, the uh, social studies requirements for Ellsworth High School is uh, three. Uh, freshman year, you take civics and government. Sophomore year, it's world history. And junior year, it's U uh, US history and uh, for the requirements. Uh, but, you know, we have some great electives, uh, you know, Holocaust, uh, Heidi Amler teaches a wonderful Holocaust class. Uh, it's really popular and we have Second World War, Vietnam conflict, uh, the American Civil War is a, one that was introduced a, a couple of years ago. And we have your you know, psych, psychology, sociology, current events and personal finance. So we have a really good variety of, um, of, of subject matter for your kids to uh, take throughout high school. Uh, and that kind of wraps up uh, social studies. So Mr. Clifford, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, freshman wing it's called. And up on the third floor, um, freshmen have their own area. And so all of the lockers for freshmen are, are on this wing. Their math, English, and social studies classes are on this wing. Um, the science classes are just below this wing in the science labs, um, but a lot of times the freshmen are worried about where they're going to be and will they be able to find their classes when three other classes are right in this right in this wing. And um, so they spend most of their freshman year here. And, um, you know, it's a it's a great place to start. And I think that they feel really secure in this wing um, throughout their freshman year. And all of their, their other classes, their electives are, could be on the first floor, second floor, or another part of the third floor. Um, but this is where they're housed for most of the time. And um, during advisory, all their advisors are here too, or in the science wing. World Languages, Mrs. Corson. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsay Corson, and I am one of two Spanish teachers. We um, have a a very short list of classes, but I promise you they're packed full of fun. We have Spanish and French levels one through four. Um, we are considered electives. We are not required for graduation. However, if you want to go to a four-year college, then you really need at least two years of the same language. And if you want to get your honors diploma from Ellsworth High School, then you need at least three years of the same language. And then the fourth year is an honors course. Um, if you are one of those students that, you know, always gets in trouble for talking, then you need to take a language because you have to talk in our classes. Um, 
Senora Cutney, Madame Speck, and I insist on it. Um, usually, when you walk by our rooms where you know we're being loud, it's kind of controlled chaos. <laughs> um, but that's how you learn a language. You have to talk and speak and hear. Um, our, our primary goal, I would say, is survival and travel skills. <laughs> so if you decide to travel to a Spanish or a, a French speaking country, that you would get what you need and you'd be able to get what you want. Um, we like to provide trips. Um, I go once a year, usually. <laughs> to Boston and we um, learn how to dance flamenco. Madame Speck um, likes to take kids to Quebec and Mrs. Cutney is the bravest of us all. She um, is taking students to Spain and the Galapagos Islands. Those are future trips um, once this pandemic is over. Um, all, all three language teachers like to have fun um, but but we do make you work. <laughs> you do have to work, but but we promise you'll have fun. <laughs> and um, we're all very well traveled teachers. Um, between the three of us, we we've we've taken a lot of trips and we've studied abroad, and that comes with stories <laughs> and teachable moments. Uh, we say a lot in the middle of class. Oh, I have a story about that, <laughs> and we tell a story. Um, so I can't wait to see if you guys have any questions and um, please take Spanish or French and um, we can't wait to see you guys. That's it. Thank you. Uh, this is a second floor and this wing it's mostly our math and some social studies classes. Visual Performing Arts, Mrs. Ireland, Mrs. Guno Briggs, Mr. Calandro, Mrs. Olson. Hello. So I am Jasmine Ireland. I am the theater dance faculty member of the VPA faculty. Um, I am actually also Mrs. Olson and Mr. Calandro tonight. Um, so let me start off just by mentioning our academy. That, that kind of is the umbrella that everything else can fall under. So Ellsworth is very unique um, in that we offer a, a distinction um, honors diploma if you choose to concentrate in the visual or performing arts. You can choose a media concentration, musical theater, theater, dance, instrumental music, um, vocal music, um, I'm missing the visual arts. So you really um, get a really wonderful opportunity to sort of steer your learning if this is your area of interest. As you can see, we offer many, 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 many courses in this department. Most of those are semester long. That's why you see so many there is that most of our courses change over at the half year. Um, so you go through the process of applying. There are certain classes that you will need to take depending on your concentration. In your junior year, you complete an internship. And in your senior year, you would complete a capstone. So it's a really special opportunity to be able to start focusing on your performing arts education and career right from the beginning of high school, if that's something that you're interested in and already know you'd like to pursue. Um, and it does come with certain perks and benefits, but it also certainly comes with a lot of rigorous work in order to get that distinction on your diploma. I'm happy to share, I have a link to our Academy slideshow. So if anyone wanted to request that from me, it has a lot more detail. Um, you can reach me at jireland at ellsworthschools.org and I'd be happy to send that link to you. Um, which will have even more detail. Usually you would apply perhaps in your freshman year if you already know that, and then you would begin that program your sophomore year. So that said, within VPA, as we call it, I teach the theater dance classes. 
those in, uh, I was going to read all that they include, but there's quite a lot there that's listed, so I won't do all that. When you first come in, you would start at a lot of the introductory level classes. We offer intro to theater, intro to vocal, and intro to dance. Public speaking is also available to freshmen. And next year, we're really excited, I'm really excited, um, that we're gonna be able to offer that as a dual enrollment class, and that is new next year. So that is very exciting. Next year, we will have the All the Worlds a Stage that rotates with dramatic literature, and that is a class all about Shakespeare. Also, costume construction and design and also our stagecraft class. Um, those are all half year courses. In a following year, dra dramatic literature is available, but th that rotates with the Shakespeare course every other year. For activities, I'm trying to keep this quick. <laughs> For activities, um, we have the fall musical which anyone who auditions for is automatically cast in. If you want in, you're in. Um, the one act play, which competes at the main drama festival when life looks a little more like it used to. The show choir, which also competes in the regional and state jazz festivals. The spring play, which is typically directed by a senior, I oversee that. They are usually in the advanced theater class and they direct that. We also, also have an honor society for our theater students, both technical and performing students. The International Thespian Society is our honor society that we have. Um, let's see. We are looking at, fingers crossed, an upcoming trip to New York City next year to see a Broadway show and eat all the good cheesecake and all of those things. So that's still in the works, we are hoping. Um, I think that's what I want to say about theater and dance. So now I'm going to become Mr. Calandro magically. And he uh, sent me something he wanted me to share with you. So let me open that document up. Mr. Calandro says, good evening, everyone. I'm so sorry that I couldn't be here to talk about our amazing music program, but I wanted to share a few things with you tonight. I am proud to have been the music director at EHS for the past five years now. And together with my students, we have built the perfect atmosphere for young musicians. The band room is a safe space and one where we foster a family environment for all who enter. We work hard to better ourselves as musicians and as teammates to each other, and I always push for us to put our best performance forward. It has led to multiple accolades, such as gold medals at the state level in jazz, multiple students accepted into all state in symphonic band, jazz band, and choir, and a first place finish at the All Jazz Festival in Springfield, Mass. in 2019. Our band and choral students put their heart and souls into our performances and festivals. And it's my goal that after four years in this group, you'll wish you still had four more to go. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at jcalandro at ellsworthschools.org. And I look forward to meeting all my new band students very soon. So you'll see the instrumental classes listed here on this slide. Um, also, Mr. Calandro conducts the chorus as well. In terms of extracurricular activities uh, for instrumentalists, I think I got them all. Uh, jazz band, and there are several different jazz bands, I believe. Pep band, jazz choir, which he directs, all state music festivals that you can apply to, and the Honor Society for Music Students is tri -M. So they have their own honor society. And I must say many students in the VPA department who are active are in more than one honor society. We have some students that are in all three. So it's a very driven group of students and there's a lot of um, interaction between the different areas in our department. 
So that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put those in the chat. And I will turn it over for the art department to Ms. Gunnell. There. Oh, so sorry about that. Uh, oh, greetings, everyone. My name is Yamur Gunal, and I teach 2D arts here at Ellsworth High School. We are so fortunate to have a great sport for the arts. Uh, for 2D arts, we have two large art studios dedicated to 2D arts that include uh, a great uh, computer lab with desktops, iPads, digital drawings, ta uh, drawing tablets, and uh, professional cameras. We also have lots of drawing and painting materials that will help you to explore all of the artistic approaches that you may be interested in. For your first year, we offer Foundations of 2D Design 1 and 2 to introduce you to a variety of drawing and painting techniques. Following years, there are many options for you to explore your particular interests, such as if you're interested in computer arts, you can take digital arts classes where you can learn graphic design, digital drawing, painting, and photojournaling. We also offer advanced art where you can earn college, degree, college credit in your senior year. Um, now I'd like to speak on behalf of Mrs. Olson, who is our arts department head and a 3D arts teacher. I'd like to say that we truly have an amazing ceramics studio space with top of the line tools and materials and a great uh, big environment. Um, so what we have there is pottery wheels, um, in sculpture and jewelry making tools that makes your life so easy. Uh, in your first year, you can take 3D1 and 3D2 uh, classes and learn to create everyday functional or decorative ceramic work. After your freshman year, there are still more things to explore and learn such as advanced ceramics, jewelry, uh, sculpture classes and advanced uh, AP ceramics arts. Uh, the arts community at Ellsworth High School offers a, ver a very positive and connected atmosphere for you to bring out your unique talents, build your skills and make connections with other artists, which is very important for artists to kind of make that connection. Besides all of the class offerings, we have an art club and National Arts Honor Society um, also helps you to um, uh, make art and share it not only with our school community, but the community out there in Ellsworth. Uh, in addition, we have a gallery space for you to display your artwork and we conduct art shows every semester. Students who are enrolled in VPA and AP art also are encouraged to open up individual exhibitions um, of their artworks in the community and in the school. Uh, we are true, we uh, truly recognize your talents and we want to make sure to make sure that you uh, reach your goals. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is our science wing, which is on the second floor, and it has five science labs. Physical education, Mrs. Hammer. Okay, good evening. I am Mrs. Hammer, and I'm one of the phys ed teachers here at Ellsworth High School, and my coworker is Mark uh, Ensworth. Uh, phys ed is required for graduation. Um, Students typically take it one semester their freshman year, another semester their sophomore year for their one full credit. We do allow and definitely encourage students to continue to take phys ed as um, electives during their junior and uh, or senior year. Our curriculum is based mainly on a lot of lifetime activities and a few team sports. Um, some examples are tennis, lacrosse, archery, uh, pickleball, badminton. We purchased mountain bikes this year. We um, have disc hoop golf now. We have golf, uh, table tennis. So it is quite a wide variety of different activities. 
In addition, in our department, we have health. It's a skill-based uh, health education and students will take that um, your sophomore year and that's half a credit, which is needed for graduation. And our health teacher is, um, her name is Katie LaCasse. So I just uh, wanna uh, wish you all the best of luck in your last few months of eighth grade year. And we look forward to seeing you in phys ed in the fall. Thank you. And this is from the second floor um, at the top of the stairs, looking down into our into our lobby area. Special education, Mrs. Fickett. Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Kristen Fickett, and I'm here on behalf of the Ellsworth High School Special Education Department. Our team teaches grades nine through twelve, and there are five of us in the department. I teach English grades nine through 12. Mr. Ellis teaches math and he does pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry and consumer math. Mrs. Goodman is our science teacher. She teaches physical science, biology and chemistry. Uh, Mrs. Palmer is our social studies teacher and she teaches US history, world history and government and civics. And uh, we have Kayla Reardon who teaches life skills. Um, we try to stick as closely as possible to what the general education classes are doing as much as we can, uh, but at a very individualized pace and at an individualized instructional level based on each student's needs. Our classes are pretty small in size, which makes us able to provide a very individualized instruction all of our classes meet the required graduation standards. Um, we offer a resource room type of setting to our students who are in special education and are placed in general education classes uh, where they can have the option to come to one of our rooms um, in, uh, from their regular education class and uh, can get extra help on an assignment, can have a quiet space to work or a quiet space to take a test, take a break, anything like that. Our rooms are always available and open for that. Um, every teacher on our team also provides what is called a supported study hall to our students in special ed, um, which is a small study hall that offers one-on-one -on -one adult uh, support on a more individualized level rather than being in a large study hall. Um, we each have an educational technician in our room, which helps us to assist all of our students. Uh, we really try to have fun with our assignments and try to relate them as much as we can to things that each student is interested in um, and things that you might also use after high school. So Mr. Ellis, for example, has a consumer math class, which is a really cool class and I would recommend it for anyone. He goes over how to fill out a W-2 form, um, how to apply for a loan at a bank. Um, how to do a budget, just stuff that you could really use after high school and will be really valuable to you. Um, and in English, we try to do resumes and cover letters that you can hopefully take after high school when you're applying for jobs. Um, we try to work on some of your college lap application letters too, if you're a senior. Um, so we really try to do stuff that you guys would use after high school and are interested in as well. Um, Mr. Ellis runs a really cool after school club. It's a video game club, which is pretty popular. Not as much so this year, just due to COVID, but in a normal year, it's a pretty cool club. He's a really awesome guy. Um, people really love it. And that's uh, once a week after school. So he runs that club. And that is it on behalf of the special ed department. We look forward to seeing you guys in the fall and have a great rest of your eighth grade year. Thank you. So throughout our um, school, there's a lot of murals that are up and uh, motivational murals, and especially in the BPA section of our school, but they're also on the second and third floors of the academic wings. And um, so a lot of students enjoy them. And it's something that mostly seniors do it and they start thinking about their junior year, something that they wanna put on their wall and leave their name and leave their mark at Ellsworth High School. Gifted and talented, Mrs. Cutney. Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Cutney and I am a the gifted and talented teacher and I also happen to teach some of Spanish, Spanish two classes. 
Um, so I think probably the, the first thing we should start with is in most middle schools, the gifted and talented program is a pullout program where kids um, literally get pulled out of their classes to go meet with the gifted and talented teacher to work on specific topics. Um, that's not how it works in most high schools. At Ellsworth High School, it's really a combination of case management. So I work closely with the guidance counselors and the different teachers to make sure that all students have the appropriate class selection um, at the appropriate level. And sometimes we find classes that you know we don't offer at Ellsworth High School. Um, and that can be typically college work. Sometimes it's for credit and sometimes it's not for credit. Um, it entirely depends on what the student is looking to achieve. Um, and how much time they have, you know, with their regular high school courses. And, you know, lots of our students are very, very busy, you know, so I try to really keep in mind their mental health and, you know, how much can someone really take on and still play sports and um, do the play and, and have a social life and get plenty of sleep. Um, we've had students take electives in um, American Sign Language and, you know, various computer science projects and um, languages that we don't offer at Ellsworth High School, like Korean or Russian. Um, so typically I try to work with the student one-on-one -on -one to really find out what are their interests and is there something out there they've always wanted to pursue but haven't had the chance to. Um, the other half of this is enrichment. Um, and during our RTI period, which we call focused learning, um, I tag students, um, and, and these are really optional, like nobody has to do this, um, but we have various things that we do weekly. Um, one is a, a weekly debate. I call them now round table discussions because when we called it debate, people would come in ready to argue. Um, and that's really, you know, not what we're trying to achieve. Um, but things like we have a book club, we have strategy games that students play with lots of teachers um, that we really have a lot of fun, but there's a lot of thinking skills involved. Um, and then there are different um, enrichment projects like National History Day or the Maine State Science Fair, you know, that st if students want to participate in, they can do that. Um, there are various conferences that we go to um, at UMaine, to generally surrounding leadership type things. Um, and I do teach a critical thinking elective, which I really encourage all of the students to take. It's a great class um, and it really focuses on, you know, fundamentals of thinking, which if, if I had my way, everyone graduating would take it. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, so this is pretty much the gifted and talented program in a nutshell. And I would love to take any of your questions in the chat. So thank you, Mr. Clifford. Thank you. This is right, Rachel's challenge. Hi, so I'm Rebecca Wright, the assistant principal here at Ellsworth High School. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a program that we have here in the building called Rachel's Challenge. We have a Friends of Rachel Club. Rachel Scott was the first student victim of the Columbine High School tragedy. And the core of Rachel's challenge message stems from an essay that Rachel wrote for her 11th grade English class called My Ethics, My Codes of Life. Rachel said that my definition of compassion is forgiving, loving, helping, leading, and showing mercy for others. I have this theory that if one person can go out of their way to show compassion, then it will start a chain reaction of the same. So after Columbine happened, Rachel's family chose to turn their own tragedy and personal loss into a positive message, which has been shared all across the country. Last year in the fall of 2019, we had the honor of hosting an assembly where Rachel's story was shared. And from there, we organized a Friends of Rachel Club. So the goal of the four club is to help you, the students, improve the culture of our school. We try to have a campus that is welcoming, safe, and filled with kindness and compassion for everybody. We believe that emotional connections are required in order to create cultural change. As people become emotionally connected, then respect grows. And we believe in getting the entire school involved. So right on the screen here, you see what the challenges are. I accept Rachel's challenge. We had many students sign. We have a huge banner in the building. And that is to look for the best in others, to dream big, to choose positive influences, to speak with kindness, and to start your own chain reaction. 
So some of our activities that we accomplished last year and this year and going into next year, we created the students came up with an Eagle's code of life, like Rachel's code of life. And so we use the acronym of Eagles and everything, every, excuse me, everyone makes mistakes, express kindness and compassion. A is for accept everyone and appreciate their differences. G is go above and beyond. L is look for the best in others. Compassion and kindness are key. E is excellence in your eyes. And S, stand up for what you believe, even if it's not popular. And we have these beautiful placards that show that all over the school and all of the hallways. We also acknowledge a student every month that embodies the um, concepts behind Rachel's challenge. And so we acknowledge that student at our student of the month assemblies. And that student um, shows the goals of looking for the best in others, dreaming big, choosing those positive influences, speaking with kindness and starting their own chain reaction. And they give a little Dunkin' Donut card treat as well. Some of the other things, and some of these are things from last year. Uh, we had a tailgate party, first ever for our football um, October week that we had. Uh, we ran a Christmas toy drive and donated the toys to Christmases for Kids. We helped with Holiday Spirit Week and those activities. You will see, um, as Mr. Clifford said, murals. You'll also see murals of positive messaging all around the school, in the, all the bathrooms, in the hallways. Um, we hosted a pregame party prior to one of the basketball games and gave out all kinds of free t-shirts. We have a um, word of the week or Rachel's word of the week, which is a one of those positive words, vocabulary words. Last uh, Valentine's Day, we had a random acts of kindness heart board where everybody wrote, tried to do random acts of kindness that week, put it on a Valentine heart and we posted it on the board. We help with Rachel's closet which is our um, clothing closet. We helped host an activities fair that was for everyone in the school to show you all the different activities that we have. So you could go around and talk to different club members and see what we offer because there's so many activities here at Ellsworth High School. Right now we're involved in resilience training with Healthy Acadia and they're coming in and our students in Rachel's Challenge are being trained um, on how to be resilient on how to bounce back on how to persevere. And they're going to take that training into their advisories and share that with their peers. We also have a wonderful staff appreciation committee. I believe you're gonna hear from one of them this um, tonight, Ellie Kane. And this week, and uh, Mr. Clifford, Mr. Frost and I came in and we had these wonderful, wonderful giant posters that said all kinds of kind things about us on our doors when we came in. That was really nice after a really long, hard week. We have a new student welcome committee so that um, they're planning for when new students come into the school. Uh, you might get a goodie bag. You might be paired up with some people to help you maneuver the school and know where you're, um, what to do at lunch and what the schedule is and what class you go to next. Uh, we have teacher, student, and staff events like a volleyball game where the faculty plays the students, that type of thing. We have mix it up advisory activities um, in a normal year, again, where your advisories are scheduled by your grade level. And the mix it ups are when we mix seniors with freshmen, with sophomores, with juniors. And so you get to know everybody in the school, not just the people within your own grade. Right now, we're involved with a new project called the Yellow Tulip Project, which we're going to be featuring in May. And the Yellow Tulip Project is a statewide grassroots project that started with a student up in Presque Isle area, actually. And it is to take away the stigma around mental illness. So many people right now are having anxiety and depression, and it's been a really difficult year for everyone. And this project um, centers around trying to make it normal and okay to talk about that and for people to know what their resources are and to feel supported in those instances. And finally, next year, we plan on offering a peer mentoring program, and the Rachel's Challenge students are going to be trained to be peer mentors to be paired up with other students who might need a little help, might need a little extra support um, within the school. So it's a wonderful program. Also, we're having um, 
the people from Rachel's Challenge actually come back and visit us again with a follow-up next year, which we're really excited about. So if anybody is interested in learning more about the program or being part of the program, please contact either myself at rwright, W-R-I-G-H-T at ellsworthschools.org or Mr. Frost, J. Frost at ellsworthschools.org. And we kind of both uh, lead that group. So we would love to have you be part of it. We cannot wait to see you next year. Thank you so much for being here tonight. All right, guidance department, Mrs. White and Mrs. Smith, college credit. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I am Mrs. Smith and I work with students uh, with last names A through H. And good evening, I am Sarah White and I work with students last names I through Z. So our goal and guidance is to help uh, you as the students identify your post-secondary plans, whether it's college or the military, joining the workforce, any combination of, of plans um, and guide you through achieving those goals. We provide the assistance in a variety of ways throughout your high school careers. Um, and there's no more awesome experience than meeting a student in eighth grade, which we've already met so many of you, it's so exciting. But then watching you for four years, learn and grow and make decisions and plan for your futures. Um, and we also, we believe strongly the importance of open communication and collaboration with families. We're all kind of part of one big team to support the students. So uh, one thing we wanted to address tonight is a unique opportunity that Ellsworth High School provides, and that's uh, four different ways that students can earn college credit while still in high school. Um, we are proud to offer students concurrent enrollment courses and Bridge Academy courses. And those are typically taken students junior and senior years. These courses are taught by Ellsworth High School teachers who are also adjunct faculty um, at credit granting institutions in the University of Maine system, primarily the University of Maine at Augusta, um, as well as the University of Southern Maine um, and Eastern Maine Community College. So students are earning both college credits and high school credits. Um, it's a great opportunity for students to ease into college learning. You have your own teachers, you're familiar with them, you're in the comfort of your own school and you're with your peers. Um, so there are some differences between Bridge Academy and concurrent enrollment. Um, I know Mr. Clifford has that slide up right now and we'll get you copies of, of that chart so that you can really look at the four different options. Um, so we offer early college courses as well through the University of Maine and the community college system. These courses are taken with college professors. They run for a traditional college semester. One awesome benefit of these courses that you, is that you would earn a full high school elective credit and your college credit in one semester. Um, so that is a great kind of fast forward way to get some credits done. And uh, we're super fortunate that in the state of Maine, the Maine Department of Education covers the cost of 12 college credits a year um, for, for Maine high school students. Um, so we also offer a wide variety of AP courses. Um, students typically start taking those their sophomore year. And through AP, students work to master material and really gain a great um, breadth and depth of information to then take a test at the end of the year. Um, and it depends on how that test goes goes and the individual score, but oftentimes colleges are able to award college credit or exempt students from certain courses um, based on those scores. So um, we'll get you a copy of, of, that, of that slide in particular so that you can look at the four different options. Um, and of course, you know, if those are, if those are things that you are your student, you know, or you as a student want to do, um, then Ms. Smith and I'll work closely with you to, to help you kind of pick out the best options for you and your, and your goals. Um, so in the guidance department, we've been pretty busy these last few weeks. Um, we have had the opportunity to meet with um, many eighth grade students, um, many of you probably that are watching, um, about coming to Ellsworth High School. And uh, during these meetings, we've uh, reviewed graduation requirements. We've talked about individual course requests for ninth grade year. Um, we've talked about plans for the future. And we've had the opportunity to learn more about our incoming students and their families. Um, so if you are even considering coming to Ellsworth High School in the fall and you have not had a chance to meet with myself or Mrs. White, 
uh, please reach out to our guidance office and uh, as soon as possible to schedule an appointment. We encourage you to register with us, even if you are not entirely certain which school you'd like to attend in the fall, because we wanna save a place for you just in case you do decide to join us. Um, over the next coming weeks, we will be working to enter all of those course requests that we talked about in some of our individual meetings. And um, we're gonna develop the master schedule and then we will be doing individual student schedules for next year. Um, our goal is to have them ready for you by the time we break for the summer. So um, we would ask that um, after uh, April vacation that you refrain from, um, kindly ask that you refrain from doing course request changes um, because from then until you receive your schedule, um, we offer a lot of time over the summer and um, during ad drop in the fall and again um, after second semester. So um, it was, we're very excited to have you and uh, we um, hope that you enjoy the rest of your eighth grade year and uh, we look forward to seeing you. And we hope if you have questions that you will put them in the chat and uh, we can answer anything that you um, have. And back to you, Mr. Clifford. Thank you, guidance. Athletics, Mr. Frost. So good evening, everybody. I'm Josh Frost, the athletic administrator here at the high school. Uh, just a quick overview of the sports that we offer. Um, in the fall, it's boys and girls soccer, boys and girls cross country, boys and girls golf, football, fall cheering, and girls volleyball. In the winter, it's girls and boys basketball, girls and boys wrestling, girls and boys indoor track, girls and boys swimming, cheering, and our unified basketball team. In the spring, we offer baseball, softball, uh, girls and boys tennis, and girls and boys outdoor track and field. One of the new things I was with high school, at least for the second year anyways, is we have a full-time athletic trainer. So um, if there's any injuries, our athletic trainer has been great about getting um, those injuries, uh, you know, figured out and get kids back on the court and playing as soon as possible. Uh, we also offer uh, a weight room that Mr. Melbourne kind of oversees and uh, allows kids to do some stuff in the weight room normally after school for an hour or so. A new program we offered, started offering this past spring is eSports. eSports, uh, for those that don't know, is uh, basically video games. Um, but it gives the kids a chance to compete for the school and we compete against other schools. Um, today we competed against MDI and Rocket League, so that was kind of cool. And then finally, something I want to just uh, point out is that fall sports, if you're interested in a fall sport, that those typically start about two weeks before school starts. So look for more information on the EHS Athletics Facebook page for start times, start dates. Um, usually there's also an article in the Ellsworth American and it's also put on our website. So uh, plenty of places to see that information, but just to kind of take note of that, that we do start fall sports, usually about two weeks before school starts. Great, so we have two students with us tonight, um, Ellie Kane and Eamon McDonald. Um, and they're just gonna talk a little bit about their transition from eighth grade to their freshman year and kind of what they, what, they went through and um, successes they've had here at Ellsworth High School. Ellie, you wanna start that? I would love to, thank you, Mr. Clifford. Um, so I would say my transition into high school went pretty well. I remember being really nervous the day before um, school started, but I had nothing to worry about because all of my teachers were just so welcoming and they really helped me adjust. Um, one thing I really liked that helped me transition um, was that Ellsworth has a freshman only day on the first day of school. So you can kind of find your way around, know where all your classes are and meet some of your new classmates. Um, and another thing is the freshman academy. It's a really great way to start high school. It makes a brand new big school feel a little bit smaller. Um, so it's a little bit less overwhelming. Um, I am fortunate enough to know both the lightning and the thunder teachers and I can't say enough good things about both teams. Um, they all really take the time to get to know you as a person and as a learner so they can teach you in the best way possible. And beyond that, they're just really great people. So having fantastic teachers like them um, made the transition a lot easier and I think you guys will find that too. And one thing I just want to say, because I know all you eighth graders are thinking about it, is the lunch food is good, so you don't have to worry about that. So. 
Thanks, Ellie. Eamon, you want to share uh, your experience in your transition from Hancock to Ellsworth High School? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm Eamon McDonald, and I'm a sophomore here at EHS. Um, at first, I was really nervous, you know, going from a really small school to what I thought was a huge school. Um, I became less nervous as I attended open house and the, uh, the freshman day that Ellie mentioned. Um, freshman Academy was super helpful. It gives you a core set of teachers that really care about you and how you're doing in school and everything like that. Um, uh, the classes are like super close to each other. So there's really no worries in, in losing classes or like not being able to find where you need to go or things like that. Uh, what I found was that uh, high school gives you a lot more freedom, but you also have more responsibility. So you really have to prioritize your like extracurricular activities and school and your social life. So on that note, I'll let Mr. Clipper take it away. Thanks, Eamon. All right, I will go back to stop sharing and go back to the chat to see if we have any questions. Um, I don't have, I don't see any specific questions for everybody. Um, I know that we threw a lot of information at you at once, um, and it's a lot to absorb. If you do have questions, then please um, email myself, dclifford at ellsworthhighschool.org, um, or any of these teachers. You can go to our staff directory on our website. Um, and I know that guidance has been registering the last couple of weeks, and um, one of the common themes, and, and um, Mrs. Bowles, if she's on this, is HCTC is popular with this class, it seems to be. And um, I would just make sure that you let your guidance counselor know that you plan on participating in uh, HCTC, either your sophomore year, junior year, or senior year, so that they can plan accordingly um, your schedule, uh, especially for your freshman year. Get a lot of the classes out of the way if you're going to go your sophomore and junior year. And um, let me see. And check one more time in the question answer. Pablo says, thank you so much for the information. Appreciate it. And the last message that I'll, I'll um, give to all eighth graders, no matter what high school you go to, just get involved in your school. We love to have kids that not only come from 750 to 222, but they're here after school, they're here before school, they're in clubs, they're in shows, they're in sports. And that's how you get to, to know a lot of uh, your classmates, especially when they come from other towns. And I think Ellie and, and Eamon will tell you that they're both um, in just about everything we offer for the most part, especially Ellie. And, um, you know, so they're going to leave here with a great experience from Ellsworth High School just because they've experienced a lot of different things. Um, so whether you go to Ellsworth High School or, or any other high school in Hancock County, um, get involved as much as you can and get the most get the most out of your experience. And you will truly appreciate it uh, later on in life and in college or at the workforce um, or whatever you choose to do. Uh, this will be on our YouTube page, so if you know somebody that missed tonight or um, you know somebody that um, came late, um, this will be on our YouTube page in its entirety, and you can watch it at any time. It's under Ellsworth High School. Thank you so much for attending tonight. We really appreciate it. Reach out if you have any questions, and have a great rest of your eighth grade year. Good luck to you.